Hi, my name is Cooper Wendland. Uh, in the next few months, I'm going to be showing you my process for designing a humanoid robot. Uh, so in this video, I'm just going to talk about uh, the different components that I'm going to use, and I'm going to show you an earlier design that I made. Um, that's not going to be very useful for me, but it was a little, it was a good experiment before I actually got the parts that I'm going to be using. So. Let's start with the servos. Uh, the goal is for it to be a really cheap robot so that other people can reproduce it after I'm done. So I'm just going for like some really basic servos that you can find on uh, Amazon or AliExpress. Uh, they're about like 25 kilograms per centimeter torque. Uh, they're a little bit slow, but hopefully they'll be able to do the job. And for the robot, it's going to have 22 of them, um, <laughs> which is even even if you're if you're trying to save money, it's still going to cost a little bit just to have that many uh, ranges of motion, but I think it'll be worth it and it'll definitely help for the end result that I'm looking for. Uh, next up, I guess we can go through the power system. So, of course, it's going to have uh, power on board. I don't want any wires running from it. A lot of different robots have that. So we're just going to go for a little a basic uh, LiPo battery, that is 2,250 milliamp hours. Um, and we're going to be using a, a DC converter to put that 3S voltage down to five volts. So then the servos are happy with it and the microcontroller will hopefully also like using five volts. Because if we ran this directly plugged into the electronics, uh, it would fry it and we're not looking for that. All right, so next up after power, I guess we can talk a little bit about microcontrollers. Um, I haven't completely decided on what I want to use. I've got a few options. So right now I'm looking at using an Arduino uh, Portenta. They're like, they're, they're fancy ones. Um, I like it because it has real time features and it also has two processors, which could be useful. Um, especially if I'm going to be controlling a lot of servos. Uh, or I could just use a basic Nano, which I have a couple that are an, another option. Um, what I'd really like to do is uh, get a Teensy and then overclock it closer to 1 gigahertz because I think that would be really cool. I don't know if it's useful having it be that fast, um, but swag points, having a... <laughs> a tiny little computer that's running at one gigahertz in your robot is just a cool flex. Um, so I'm probably going to be buying one of those in the next little while, depending on how the project goes. Uh, right now I'm still doing a lot of the mechanical design, so I'm not even thinking about software yet. Um, so next up we've got how the controller is going to communicate with the servos. And since I'm going to be using 22 servos, obviously I can't plug 22 different servos into my microcontroller because that's not super feasible. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to use uh, these tiny little 16 channel uh, like servo drivers. Uh, and what that will allow me to do is I can just use two of these and all the servo wires will connect up here and it'll allow me to use way less pins on my, my board which will hopefully simplify things. Ideally, I really wanted to use uh, serial bus servos, but the company, which I originally designed the robot for, um, to use their servos, they're super sketchy trying to order them, so I decided not to use that company. Uh, which I guess brings me to showing you the design that I, I designed with those other servos, and then I can kind of talk about what I'm hoping to have done for the next video. All right, so here's my original design. Um, so basically I started with the legs and I'm probably gonna do that again this time. So as you can see, we've got uh, these two servos that are connected together and this makes up the hip. So the hip's going to have two servos controlling it. Um, and then, so it's just gonna have the side to side motion and then it's going to have the forward and backwards motion from the hip. And then after the hip, you get to the knee, um, which I kind of consider this like the, the quad area. And then from there, we get to the ankle, which is uh, relatively chunky. 
so the ankle again it's going to have that axis and this axis and the end of the ankle is my foot I'm probably going to use a similar foot design for my next robot but basically it's just like a bent piece of metal and then either foam or I really wanted to use cork um, yeah so those are kind of like the legs then if we move up to the hip area um, again I actually I was wrong I used three three axes for the hips um, which is where like the 22 degrees normally it would just be 17 but I really want um, more freedom for movement and hopefully you'll see that farther in the line when we get to programming because I want it to be able to do really uh, agile movement and ideally be very flexible uh, so we've got a couple different motors here so uh, the hip will be able to twist this way uh, this way and this way so my robot will be able to do the splits and hopefully a high kick and then for the waist we've got one motor um, and then once it moved up here I kind of got lazy because I was getting closer to the deadline where I was ordering the parts and then I found out that the parts were <laughs> not going to be easy to get so I switched motors um, but basically this whole hip design is going to be adjusted but I can kind of show you what my original idea was so it's kind of like these interlocking pieces um, for my next version I'm going to use bearings 3d printed bearings uh, so I can get really wide diameter uh, inner diameter for a cheap cost uh, and there's the teensy and the battery case and then basically arms I haven't really thought about that very far but you know we're gonna have one for the rotator cuff and then lifting up your arm you know basically all the range of motions that a person has I want the robot to have besides like simpler ones like fingers it's not gonna have fingers or um, a mouth but it is gonna have neck movement yeah uh that's that's kind of it for this video uh in the next one i'm going to go over the costs and hopefully have an update on the the new mechanical design so yeah if you like this type of video i guess comment or if you have any questions also just ask and uh, i'll have an update for you next sunday hopefully